What about consciousness? What about my thinking? Surely you don't believe that that's just a bunch of atoms obeying the core theory of physics. So yes, I do. Uh, we can't prove it, right? This is something that we believe is true, but is a conjecture that we think is reasonable. All I can do is give you some clues, some signposts along the way, okay? So this is a C. elegans, this is a nematode, a little tiny round worm. And you and I have 85 or 86 billion neurons in our brain. We're complicated. And the task of mapping out all those neurons is an ongoing one. C. elegans has 302 neurons. We've mapped them all out. We know how they're talking to each other. We don't know what they do. We don't know neuron by neuron what their function is. But a paper came out just very recently that said that we think we have a good idea what one of these neurons is doing. Its job, when something pokes the nematode, this neuron says, is that, did I run into something? Did I run into a rock or am I just poking myself? It's distinguishing between endogenous and exogenous impulses, which is to say, it's telling the difference between itself and the outside world. If you want, this is the first little glimmer of self-awareness in the evolution of neural systems. It's not like we have, it's not writing novels, but it's telling you know, it's the difference between itself and the world. And once that starts, just like life, you can imagine how it takes off. That's an extraordinarily useful thing to be able to do, to tell the difference between yourself and the outside world, to hold a little representation of yourself in your mind, such as it is. Here's another step along the way. Again, maybe, this is much more speculative than physics stuff, but this is Tiktaalik. This is one of the first aquatic animals to climb up onto land, right? And there's a neuroscientist, Malcolm McIver, who proposed the following idea. If you're a fish swimming through the water, you only see a few meters ahead of you, right? The attenuation length of light in water is just a few meters. And you're swimming at a few meters per second. So if you see something, you only have seconds to respond to it. You don't have a lot of time for thinking about it, okay? You gotta decide immediately, is this good, bad, what should I do? But when you climb up onto land, now you can see for miles. Now there's a whole new strategy that opens up. I can see something and I can think about different possible alternative responses to seeing it. It is evolutionarily favored, in other words, to develop a faculty of imagination once you climb up onto land. And indeed, this is a theory that makes predictions. MacGyver made predictions for the evolution of the eyeballs, that like the eyeballs would move up before the fish completely climbed up onto land, and indeed this is seen in the fossil record. Don't know if it's true, don't know if it's the right way of thinking about things, but again, consciousness, thinking, is something extraordinarily complicated. Right now, we're just at the point where we can see how maybe through a series of remarkable things it came to be.